It is Monday night, it's 8.30, uh, more or less, and you're watching it's Let's Monday Kill night, Twitter, the Sorbet edition. Uh, and I'll just turn my sound down like a professional on the YouTube page. <laughs> so you're watching the Sorbet edition, which is our 30 minute catch up of the week's tweets. Uh, we do this in between our full shows. So our next full show is going to be next Sunday, the 9th of May at 8 p.m. And that will feature comedians Matt Green and Luisa Omelan. So that is going to be a cracker. If you want to join us for that in the Zoom room, please do go to Eventbrite and book by donation to do that. You can also watch on streams and details of that will be on our website, www.letskillkitter.com. Let's kill Twitter, let's kill <laughs> um, and crucially, please do follow us uh, on Twitter, of course, at LKTZoom. And yes, we are available on Facebook and Instagram as well. Other, <laughs> other social media is available. Um, so now with all the admin out of the way, um, I can now introduce my co-host as ever with me to go through the Twitter sphere. It's comedian Sajila Kershi. Hello. Hi, hello, 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 hello there out there. Hello, Julian. We haven't spoken hello. since the last show um, and we're just gonna have a catch up afterwards, I know. Um, but how have you been? Uh, yeah, fine. I mean, actually we haven't spoken, yeah, as you say, since the last show and that does feel like an incredibly Ages long time ago. Uh, ago. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I'm okay. I feel like uh, a little earlier this was like being in a in a ship because the wind was just so crazy. So I'm I'm already feeling a bit seasick, but otherwise fine. How are you? Hello, bank, hol bank holiday disappointing us again, again with the with the rainy, windy weather. Uh, kind of waste. I mean, you want a sunny weekend, don't you, for bank holiday? So you can feel like you're sticking it to the man. But unless, of course, you are the man. Yeah. Um, but, I've never thought about is that oh, I suppose is that like kind of May Day is that a bit of May Day aggro? Of course it is technically it's May Day, isn't it? That tradition yeah. feels sort of somehow quite lost. I mean mate in you know, we, we just know that we've got two bank holidays in May and we demand that one of them <laughs> should be at least sunny. Yeah, well uh, yeah, we do want, want the next one definitely. Can you please make it sunny? And of course we're starting to slipping to re, uh, kind of back to a little bit of what everyone's calling normality. Uh, which is quite exhausting. Yeah. I'm finding it quite exhausting. I don't know about you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, last week you said, I remember you said, oh, you're feeling a bit more like your, you know, your old self again because the, the normal thing was sort of working for you. And I think it's, mm. I think it's sort of working for me too. I feel like there's a sort of this gradual uh, sort of normalisation is is useful. It's just, it's very good to have a run in to things. And obviously there are clearly there are people that can just see the sort of freedom on the horizon and are getting uh, very itchy to get there sooner but you know it's just a few weeks now so uh that's good so yeah it's good it's good to feel um a, a bit more normal and uh, it would be nice to have the weather to go with it but there's always the tw there's always twitter if you're feeling sad and blue there's always twitter to either reinforce that or to take you out of that yes lockdown or now no lockdown that twitter will always be there our friend letting us know everything and, in, and judging by my timeline when i was filming yesterday everyone's talking about Line of Duty. Now, I don't know about you, Julian, but I've actually not okay. watched one episode. Uh, well, it, so this is this is it. I have not watched an episode either, so that makes two of us. Um, so, But I'm still glad you brought it up because we can't, we can't duck it. The figures mm -hmm. are like, it's basically one of the most watched dramas of, of all time, record-breaking figures. Uh, very, obviously, there were a lot of people that were sort of disappointed uh, by the ending. That, that much I gleaned from the sort of slew of tweets that were coming last night. Um, having said that, I mean, it's, I think endings are quite difficult, really. They have always been sort of notoriously difficult. So I have a lot of sympathy, even though I haven't watched it. And strangely, I actually feel like I, even though I know what's been going on, I actually feel like I want to watch it now. Yeah, maybe we should watch it together and then we can do our own little review of it. Um, because I, I want to see it from the beginning. I have, because I'm not really, as much as I said, oh yeah, line of duty. I was thinking, actually, I'm just. It's the same thing I did with um, Breaking Bad. I didn't never saw an episode of that either. Oh, right, um, okay. Or Games of Game of Thrones. Oh. I mean, who who am I? I've not watched any of these things. So I'd like to see Line of Duty. It does look like something alluding to politics as well. Lots of mentions. Oh no, about. completely. I mean, the ending very much seemed to be, you know, was was very much pointed towards corruption, which is sort of extremely timely given what else has been in the news. Um, but as I say, you know, one of the big things that was coming from a lot of the tweets was sort of disappointment. So let's let's find some of the disappointment tweets. Ah, oh, I like this one. 
from a guy called Stephen Graham. I haven't seen this many disappointed people since 31 Seconds into Spaceman by Babylon <laughs> Zoo. Now, of course, we featured that uh, in our show with uh, Andrew Doyle and Aisha Hazarika that came up in, in the uh, sort of 90s music section. And of course, it is classical. It's got this amazing intro and then it just kind of tails off. So I thought that was it's fantastic. Not one, it's, it's an odd one to have kind of almost trended on our show, the fact we've had it on twice. Uh, you know, it's, it, it isn't one that everybody knows, but... And, but as soon as you say the intro, I know, I, I, I can hear it in my head. Um, and yes, disappointing, you're right. Um, and what else have we got on So there? we've got Ed Gamble uh, chiming in with, can't wait to watch the Line of Duty finale on Gogglebox, which is nice. kind of almost like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. There. Um, so they were, well, actually there was another, I love this Richard Sandling one as well. And, I, and there's a John Luke Roberts one that I've got to show you. So Richard says, come on, dudes, TV show's finale can't be all Sapphire and Steel, Blake 7 or Blake Trap seven. Door. <laughs> now, apart from Trap Door, was a big fan of Sapphire and Steel and Blake 7. I have to say, I did really like Blake 7, but that, you know, sci-fi on a budget, but they made it work. I do oh, remember... No, I love Blake 7. Yeah. Serverland, was it Serverland, Serverland. the evil... Yeah, it was, it was pretty fierce, kick-ass, kind of uh, post-modern feminist kind of vibe going on now that you look back on her that is a good um, point that, yeah, yeah no you know an incredibly trendy haircut as well i seem to remember as well yeah very yep. severe um yeah no that uh, good uh, good memories of uh, there was a line in um blake seven with the computer that they had was uh, not the fanciest computer and the, the catchphrase used to be that is beyond my humble capabilities and that's that's <laughs> that's a mantra i like to keep in life just in case um, right, so let's, before we go too far down memory lane, we've got John Luke Roberts, who's composed a little bit of a, a kind of, um, I'm not, it's sort of, it's more than a triptych, because essentially he's, he's got with a the theme of endings and them being like difficult and disappointing and all the rest of it. And he's done this huge thread. Uh, he's, you know, picked up some very sort of unlikely uh, candidates. I'm going to flip to my favourite, which was the second one. Um, the Good Life finale knocked it out of the park, ending in, spoilers, Tom and Barbara delighted when they finally win Jer Jerry and Margot round to the farming life, but distraught when it turns out that they, Tom and Barbara, are to be the livestock. <laughs> it's a, it's yeah, a classic one, that. Um, so what else can we, what else can we, now I'm going to write conversation point. So this, I'll, I'll get this on the conversation point. So Paul Embry styles himself as, as Blue Labour, normally tweets about politics, hasn't, also hasn't watched Line of Duty, but makes an interesting point that I've seen elsewhere. This Line of Duty thing is TV like it should be and used to be. No binge watching, no Netflix, no watching on demand, just one episode per week on primetime terrestrial TV with the whole nation watching at the same time and talking about it at uh, work and in the pub the next day. And that is actually worth tweet, worthy tweet because uh, that is effectively what perhaps we need. Who knew Line of Duty would be the thing that brings us back to sort of a little bit of normality? Um, and I, I, I think that's why I feel left out because it's like everyone's at the party apart from me with all the stuff that's going on. So I think, oh, I wish I had now watched it with everybody else. Um, and it is something that's bringing everyone together. That's why I'm really fascinated. What is it that's making everybody love this? Well, I mean, it's just, clearly the suspense and the writing is, is you know, extremely good. Um, Jed Curio has a somewhat of a track record for, for this. But, um, you know, it's, it's sort of gripping and enthralling. I mean, you know that I have a sort of bias towards American dramas, but I, I, I will unlock that occasionally for some, for some guests, as it were, for some special guests. But I mean, this is an interesting point. I mean, you know, because we don't watch TV like this, and I think maybe because it was so um, suspenseful and so stressful, people actually needed that breather of a week to kind of come back to it and say, right, I'm I'm ready now. Because there are some shows I think that don't watch uh, that don't watch as well as a kind of a, as a binge thing. Mm hmm. I think some things you do need to sort of. Um, uh, I may destroy you for me was uh, one of those it took me it took, yeah. you know even after the whole series was ended i was still thinking about it you know i'm trying to unpick some of the things i'd seen and be talking to my friends about it so for me that was a similar ilk but you're right this is this is really um like i said not having seen it 
I'm fascinated by how everybody's being quite positive generally on, on social media, on, on Twitter about this one show. Um, and I really do feel like I've missed the party now, but yeah, I, I love it. I love, it's I love not that. often I feel like that about TV, but I, I do yeah. slightly, but it does. The good thing is that it hasn't scotched it for me. I do want to go back to it and watch it. And I guess I have quite high expectations expectations now and I know that endings are difficult look at the fuss people made over uh, Game of Thrones I know you haven't seen Game of Thrones but they made a, an awful fuss about the ending on that and that was never going to be easy to sort of please people I May Destroy You is a very good example of something that can't well it could be binge watch but it, it wouldn't be I don't think it would be the right way to kind of uh, digest it so there are but that's that said though Julian obviously we're now going to have to binge watch this to kind of catch up to speed, as it were. No, and, and, uh, having said all that, out of the bag now. <laughs> yeah, because there's no way we're going to be able to watch this like once a week, and you know, two years later down the line, hey guys, what do you think about the ending? Like, uh, yeah, so we are going to have to binge watch it. There's no other way to to get around that. Um, but I, I think it's the BBC have finally earned their license fees this year because everyone was that was something that we covered in another show about um, you know how expensive uh, it is and what what's the point. So perhaps people feel a little bit more like, yeah, OK, we've got our money's worth now. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I think it gives its money's worth in, in, a, in a lot of different ways. But I mean, it can't do any harm to have some good publicity, absolutely, um, for this. And drama is obviously renowned for their drama. But, you know, look at the education stuff over lockdown, the bite sized stuff and, you know, all the, the sort of home education stuff as well. But, yeah, that that's another that would be a good discussion with some uh, with opposing sides in the Zoom room. I think that one. Um, now, in terms of signing off on Line of Duty, actually, this is quite interesting. So Anita Singh, who's the arts writer at the um, uh, Telegraph, she picked out a couple of screenshots from a previous... Uh, well, actually, the context is here. Um, it's, an, it's a news piece um, that basically it was the Line of Duty was... Fi- featured in a Guardian article called The Biggest TV Ooh. Disappointments of 2019. So obviously it's previous series. Um, and the response uh, from Jed Mercurio is here. Uh, I don't see why it's okay for a journalist to participate in an article which is fundamentally sneering, not to have at least some insight into what a <laughs> she's being. Ooh. If you go into the public domain having a pop at people and then expect, then expect some comeback, uh, there was actually an enormous pile on from journalists saying she's just doing her job. She's a talented writer. She's a piece of shit. Fuck her. Um, obviously, if that wasn't a Jed Bacurio quote, then we de- uh, quote, then we absolutely apologise. But that's certainly the inference uh, from uh, from this tweet. Mm, from the so tweet. there you go. So that was an in- that was a, that was interesting. Um, I should just point out that uh, the uh, the fantastic Kieran Hodgson has put together one of his brilliant um, characterizations uh, of the show so you can literally watch Line of Duty in about two two minutes 20 seconds I won't go through all of that but I will flag it to our viewers so that you know it's there um, I'm judging by it's but the likes and the retweets uh, lots of people know it's there but I'm going to go to a tweet that you picked out um, so that bring because with corruption obviously was the theme of Line of Duty and uh, you picked out a tweet from comedian uh, Athena Kugenblau, who uh, I probably haven't pronounced that right, but we will have you on the no, show. Yeah. Kugenblau, that's right. We will have you on the show, Athena. No worries. Um, this takes us back to the Boris scandal. Um, do you want to just um, read? Oh, read yeah. So on? the tweet is taking Boris Johnson down for cash for curtains. Sounds like when they got Al Capone for tax evasion after everything, it's the last straw. That's the last straw. So, yeah, because obviously I, I, I know the. the the, the, the comparison of we didn't even did we talk about this last week i can't remember when this story came times all blending into one about boris spending 800 pounds on a roll of of, of uh, wallpaper just to have a little recap uh and uh, describing his john lewis uh flat as a uh, well, living in a theresa may's john lewis taste wasn't it Yes, yes. And I'm not even sure if it was John Lewis that she she used, but he used he said it was a John Lewis nightmare and then had to sort of say, oh, the worst thing about all of this is that I I really like John Lewis. So he obviously had to backtrack. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, you know, the word really, that's the worst thing about this, that you you miss John Lewis and you think you're not going to get some freebies from them or you're going to piss them off. What about the rest of the country that you pissed off uh, and, and, you know, got on the nerves? 
but yeah, I, I loved I love the comparison because that is effectively if if depending on how the elections go, you know, that, that could it could potentially be his downfall. And I would love to see uh, someone's downfall through decor rather than, you know, uh, because it, it, it almost seems to sort of be him more humiliating. It would be more humiliating for him to say, well, how did you lose the public's vote? Yeah. And how did you lose their, you know, forget that. I mean, obviously, I'm not downplaying you know, all the people that, that have died in our past year and stuff. But this is if this is how we get them, then that's how we get him. And and I, I, so I, so I love this tweet, um, because if we can't get him done for the real big crimes, then let's just, you know, use another way to get him out, basically. Is, but of course, yeah. there are other other leaders available. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, I mean, well, we'll, we'll get to Keir Starmer's uh, uh, addition to this uh, cash for cushions, cash for curtains debate in a minute. Um, but I mean, it is interesting because you, you're talking about scandals, and uh, we've had the sort of the, the the let the bodies pile up question mark and what context mm. he said that in, but. Cushions and furnishings. Oh, come on! For, yeah, no, we're not. Bodies, that's it. Let's, let's <laughs> talk about the furnishings. And there is a saying which um, was reminded yet again Jeremy Vine, because you know I watch his show every day. But he was reminding his guests that someone had once. There was a Labour MP that told him in the nineties, I think. Uh, he said to him, he said, "Oh, you've got there's two scandals this week, so you've got double the trouble." And the MP said, "Well, actually, uh, it's half the trouble because as soon as you've got." two things in the public eye then it you know it kind of uh, degrades like that the the emphasis comes off one of them inevitably because they they're concentrating on multiple things so i you know mm. I, that may be what's going on here i think it has cut through uh, more than what well, the polls are starting to suggest that it's cut through obviously we'll know more about how that's affected how it's affecting the numbers uh, you know for the elections on after thursday on yeah, Thursday night. Yeah. But I mean, Keir Starmer couldn't resist wading, and we'll have to go back to the Boris, uh, the, the Boris pick in a minute. Keir Starmer couldn't uh, resist wading in. And obviously he, when he was out campaigning, in, um, I don't know if it's Hartlepool or, or where it was actually, but <laughs> wherever it was, has a John Lewis, that's the important thing. So he, he went uh, and looked at the, the John Lewis wallpaper and um, Sam Fried Friedman, who we've had uh, on the show before in terms of his tweets. Um, that's right, this sort of education wonk and general, general very clever bloke. Uh, he's sort of pointing out that it has an unfortunate Ed Miliband energy. Um, and I think chiming in with that, uh, Reece, Jacob Rees-Mogg himself, who I, you know, I don't know how often he tweets this is, weighs in to say, uh, glad to see the leader of the opposition is so busy. Tomorrow, who will be showing us how to eat a bacon sandwich? Oh! <laughs> it, do you think he's got well, bacon sandwich energy? <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny because everybody, nobody forgets these small. See, they don't forget these things, do they? No. The public doesn't forget. We don't. None of us forget. Um, interestingly enough, just on um, Keir Starmer. So the film I've been working on um, recently has has. Uh, they were looking for a place to film near me, and uh, I just happened to mention. Don't know why dogging came into the conversation, and um, Keir Starmer went to grammar school here, where which is quite a big um, dogging space uh, right now. So uh, you know, who, I don't know. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's, not, I know, like just on the school. Yeah, Keir Starmer okay. went to school. Well, I'm just you know just to kind of balancing things out in, in sleeves and stuff. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so they're two um, completely isolated. They're two completely different. But well, I just thought I'd have just, I'd have just needed to tell someone. This, oh my God, oh my God, the school, the local school. Um, but no, I, I think uh, it, it's funny because obviously these these small little things or, or that seem small, are, you're right, it does stay, it, it does stay in the public conscious a lot more. And I think it's probably because I don't know if you picked up the tweet about the Carrie, um, Carrie Antoinette or is it, I, I'm sure you picked it up. Last there were week. a couple of Carrie Antoinettes, although I didn't favourite them actually. Um, yeah, anyway. yeah. And, and, and I think that's, um, you know, so they're, they're the moments of wonderfulness that I see on Twitter. That I think, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, I, I don't know if I can, I, I, did we did one of us pick it out this week? I might have liked it and forgotten. I definitely it. retweeted sort of Carrie Antoinette things, but I didn't, because there was so much else going on, I didn't end up. Yeah. The re one of the reasons why is because the, the Boris, um, so when Boris sort of lost it a little bit during Prime Minister's Question Time last Wednesday, the picture that resonated from that 
is uh, is this one here of him sort of jabbing at Keir Starmer. Um, and so Madeleine Grant from The Telegraph has used the Jackie Weaver, well, not Jackie Weaver's phrase, but the phrase hurled at Jackie Weaver. Read the standing orders, read them and understand them. Which fit, which fits very well uh, with that image. But actually, just to blow our own trumpet a little bit, um, th this is our best tweet so far. Uh, I did a little meme with, because I'm so obsessed by Boris and his buses, and the fact that he paints buses. And I thought it was amusing. I didn't think it was that great. I just went, I paint buses. What do you do? As he's jabbing towards Starmer. We got 163 likes and 27 retweets. Yay, which, you yay, know, finally. Yay. <laughs> I know it's chicken feed well by the standards of a lot of the people we feature. And uh, did anyone follow us off the back of that? No, no, they didn't. <laughs> but we still yeah. we still scored some numbers with that because, you know, you, you see a photo like that and you've you've kind of got to play with it, really. It's got to be said. Yeah, it's got it's got it needs a caption, doesn't it? Of those kind of photos. Um, so what what else has been in your well um, tweets like? Okay, there's quite a lot here. I mean, and also realise that uh, time, as time marches on, I realise how hard it is to jam stuff into thirty minutes. But you know, we're giving it a go. I've got to say this this one email totally you know stuck in my craw uh, email. This tweet about email sign-offs or his signatures stuck in my craw a little bit. Um, so Mark Sparrow, who I think is a tech uh, writer, technology journalist, uh, featured some of his tweets before, I think. Um, it's retweeted by a guest uh, on the show. Uh, I think it's Viv Groskop who retweeted this, and I saw it via Viv. The tweet goes, uh, something, obviously something he's noticed, best email signature ever. It's normal for me to take a couple of days to read my emails and several more days to reflect on the matter and respond in a calm manner. The culture of immediacy and the constant fragmentation of time are not compatible with the kind of life I lead. Now, I, so, well I'm sorry, but I, we are obviously going to, we're definitely going to disagree yeah. on that. I hate this. I find this the most... Is the most patronising, condescending load of wank ever. I really, really, really got to me. And I know that other things should probably be getting my goat a little bit more, but it's always the trivial things, isn't it? First first thing, and I will totally fit, when I've said this, I'll finish. The first thing is that this, that can't be your email signature because if you're responding, if somebody has to see your email signature by you responding to them, it has to be your out of office. I mean, maybe perhaps that's what he means. It's your. It's going to be your out of office uh, reply or mm. automatic reply bounce back. It can't. You can't write to someone and say, "See below." Uh, see my lesson on Zen below. Um, you know, and I get it that you can't. That we do live in a culture of immediacy, but I think that. If you're a really, really busy person and you can't respond to your emails within a week, then quite often a lot of those people are in a position where they actually have people doing their admin for them anyway, so maybe that doesn't apply. But you also have to think about the power structure here of the ki of kinds of people who are writing and what kind of level of expectancy they might have or what, what urgency it might have. Uh, it, you know, And also just, just, it just, it's my kind of maybe slightly OCD efficiency. I just can't. I couldn't not reply to something at least within a week time frame. Time time frame. Uh, end end of rant. <laughs> no, no. I, I pre lockdown, I would have been with you on that 100. percent But since lockdown, I, I barely even look at my emails. So I'm kind of like almost, uh, you know, like levels of communication mode. I'm, I'm I've got like three email accounts. Uh, you know, Twitter, but everything. It just gets overwhelming. So I have to kind of really. Uh, you know, just go on there when I when I feel I can cope with it. And even then, I kind of agree with this. I do sometimes have to consider what my answer is. Sometimes I've opened up an email and think, oh, yeah, I'll get back to it, but let me read the next one. Then I've forgotten it because, you know, age and memory. Um, but I would love to have something like this because that explains my behaviour rather than excuses it. Do you know what I mean? It's like I always want to have, like, that sign off, like, yeah, uh, when I finally get to reading this email, just know that I might not respond to it straight away because, you know, I've got like a chaotic life. That's what I'd like to put in my, but I thought it was quite funny. It's, I think it's a funny thing. I don't think it means it seriously to have a humorous kind of uh, thing. But so when people are like yourself, I think, you know, who are annoyed by this, think, oh, okay, well, there's an explanation then as I to why 
my colleague doesn't respond to me straight I mean, look, one of the crucial things is, is this a bounce back? You know, is it a bounce back or is it an email that you send? So let's say it's a bounce back and that, that sort of fulfills that job. It, I think a holding, there's a lot to do. As someone who, who has to get used to the silent no, we've all emailed people and we've never actually heard the word no from them because they just don't reply. And you, know, you just have to kind of learn to kind of get used to that, I suppose, <laughs> over time. But this is one of those things where... Um, you know, a holding, a simple holding reply uh, is always goes a long way. I think that's more polite, quite honestly, to have to issue a simple holding reply and say, look, I can't, I can't really deal with this until the end of the month or whatever it might be. And it really, ma you know, manages someone's expectations. But then to sort of, uh, you know, to have this kind of, uh, you know, quote that, you know, you'd find on a calendar or something like that at the end of it, it's like, oh, come on. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm all for sort of, um, de you know, detoxing and, and meditation and having a kind of a, an, a different way of looking at time, if you like. But uh, there is there is a limit. <laughs> and that limit is five urgent, days. <laughs> I just it depends how urgent the response is needed. Like it's, if it's something like, can you attend this meeting tomorrow? You probably need an urgent response on that. So, yeah, that should be responded to. But then if you haven't opened the email, then how can how can you know? So, you know, you might miss out on stuff. And I think the reason why things have changed in the past year, I mean, certainly for a creative, it's like, obviously your inbox is your work. And so you'd have to open up that every morning, where, you know, I would get up and, and answer my emails because um, I've had a promoter contact me or whatever. And over the past year, I just think we've got out of the art of of doing that. I mean, I've got like a a, a load of unanswered messages on on my messenger and I just can't face them, even on 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 the WhatsApp. I mean, so many WhatsApp groups that have started since lockdown, yeah. and I can't. I just can't keep up. It's overwhelming. And I see like oh, two hundred messages. I'm like, I haven't got time to read those two hundred messages that I've missed. You know, let alone answer them. So I do think that perhaps this last year has just made us like, oh, I can't. I can't. Mm. There's no reason That's... for me to do. This. I just want to, you know, step back. That is really interesting because I think what you've raised as well is the fun. If you've got so many, cha if you're operating on various channels, mm. if you're, you know, if you are messaging through Facebook or WhatsApp or, you know, an email, then that's tricky because, you know, you, you've got to funnel it, funnel it down. Um, I thought think the thing for me is that email allows you to have that bit more context. Um, and it's also slightly getting quite old school in, in a way in terms of con contacting people but people are people are funny about how they're contacted i've seen people who are um you know journalists on uh, twitter who've got their dms open saying don't contact me about work through my dms on twitter it's like oh you know and it's just this line as well the cult the culture of immediacy and constant fragmentation it's just like oh it's yet something else we can re be responsible for i'm sort of <laughs> gibbering in a corner thinking about how many world wo world woes i'm responsible for it's like oh no i'm adding to a culture of immediacy and constant fragmentation but yeah i mean i think you've raised some some good points there so i i can i can be a bit more zen about it now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also even with the with our show, um, you know, there's bits of news I've missed this week because I just I just it's it's exhausting. I'm really quite I think I get really fatigued by by all of it. You know, the constant stream of news of you know we watch TV, we watch Netflix. We we're, we're, there's so many mediums and you can't keep up. And I think obviously you've streamlined it to down to emails. Perhaps that's what you know. I personally need wow. to do, but it didn't seem this overwhelming before lockdown. I don't remember being, you know, it was just the norm then, and I don't know why I personally find this all a, a, a bit of a struggle. And everyone who's actually on my WhatsApp groups and Messenger, uh, if you're listening, um, yeah, I'm really sorry. I, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, there's nothing else. I've got no other explanation. I just haven't got round to it. Just saw that millions of messages, and I can't take it. I just can't. <laughs> I mean, I suppose this is one of the great things about Twitter is that, you, you know, you get something like this and uh, uh, it's quite trivial and, and it will suddenly kind of uh, overtake all the other things. So it's a good way of sort of display, displacing from like some of the kind of other world woes that are going on. That's my phrase at the moment, I think, world woes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I might true. feel like I, keep, I, think I might have to keep producing that tweet every time we have guests on as well. What do you think about this? I need to know. <laughs> I think I'm going to be in a minority, actually. Um, 
So we're kind of we're sort of towards the end now, um, and I mean, there's there's a ton of things that we could uh, talk about. I mean, there's the fate, there's Blair hair. I think everyone's seen Blair hair. Oh my hair. god! Look at its long, long lockdown locks at the moment. Um, just trying to think. Silver Foxy definitely. Has, um, isn't it? Great tweet from Laura. Lexi's going to be coming on the programme soon. Uh, she went into, I don't know what store it is, but uh, all the cereal boxes, were, well, most of them were landscape, uh, which is very weird. I've not seen, I don't know yeah. when they've all been rebranded. I caught this tweet as well, and I thought I was quite fascinated by the, just waste more room, doesn't it? I mean, do we need to go, when, is it a printing it error or...? No, no, I totally do, but that's a good Genuinely. point. Yeah, you, you've got to say it's a good use of space, but assuming they're getting more product in that in that way by, by doing it like that. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know. There must be a percentage extra free. And look, two ninety nine. I mean, I, I don't, I, I eat porridge every day, so I don't really eat regular seed, but that's really expensive to me. Yeah, I I, I, well, yeah, I guess it probably, I mean, yeah, that's true. I haven't had... A uh, box of anything like that for so long that it, it, I'm slightly out of touch with the people. I think it wouldn't be the first time. Right, let's just have a quick. Uh, let's have a quick. Uh, oh, actually, I think I think I might have found the perfect one to end on because, well, let's face it, we talked about food boxes. So why not let's end on food boxes? Uh, it's a tweet from someone uh, called Moose. Uh, it's, it's simply a pizza box. She says, "I'm deeply concerned for humanity." And that's because the pizza box has written on it, open box before eating pizza. <laughs> oh, depends dear. how hungry or stoned you are, I suppose. I suppose. It just depends how nutritious. I mean, to be honest, the box is probably more nutritious probably than has. the base. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen some pretty <laughs> stupid things written uh, instruction-wise before, but I, that is that It is might be to let out the steam, maybe. Maybe open that little gap up to let out the hot steam so it's not so hot. I don't know. That is a stupid thing. That is a stupid thing to put. That unnecessary, I think. Has there been has there been incidents that where where people have accidentally eaten the box and that they have to now, you know, disclaim a what 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 what, what was the reasoning in the in the boardroom when they decided this? Was whoever was making that decision? <laughs> the cardboard uh, room. Yeah. <laughs> cardboard room. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah. I think you could be onto something. I mean, it, you know, do people put things on like this because of disclaimers? There must, you know, there might be some precedent. There might be some investigative journalism behind this tweet that needs doing. Or somewhere in a book somewhere, there's uh, probably a funny story about. Yeah, something's happened. But you know what? I want to go back in time. I want to know why there was never a disclaimer on McDonald's apple pies. They were so hot, they always burnt your mouth. Yeah, I, rem I do remember those back in the yeah. day. Yeah, never, never warned us. It was like a, that, I think that was a hate crime, actually. So I'm going to go back and I want to say that was a hate crime. But didn't it affect us all equally? I don't know anyone that was immune to the heat. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, uh, against humanity. Oh, that was it, what yeah. it was. It's so awful already. And then they burn our mouths and we all would fall for it every single time. I don't even know if they still make them, uh, those apple So boys, kind of they? McDonald's in the Hague for a sort of retrospective war crime, essentially, is what we're looking at here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we should we should try them. It's not just like the fact that every single thing doesn't have any an iota of nutritional value. Um, and I always feel dirty after one. I don't know about you, I just feel really dirty and I've just scrubbed myself clean. Um, <laughs> you know, when I've uh, succumbed to one because I think I'm so hungry. Um, I mean, they're, they're hot enough to be back, but they're the kind of things you'd put on your sort of back to warm your muscles up or something like that although you'd still love a kind of hot water bottle but worse you'd need a a cup yeah that. But uh, I, and, and maybe they ate that maybe that is the boxes of mcdonald's are probably more nutritious than the actual mcdonald's sorry mcdonald's we're slagging you off but you know i know you do salad boxes now trying to make an effort and you know they do they bags do. of fruit I, I seem that, you know, basically whether it's the McDonald's boxes or the uh, pizza boxes, there's plenty of cardboard hydrates in them. Whoa! <laughs> I think I'm on a roll. <laughs> no. Yay! Right, I suppose we should um, we should probably sign off. Um, I, I mean, yeah. other, other fast food is, is available. Um, the, all the tweets that we've talked about in previous shows and we've selected for tonight are in our likes column. Uh, so you'll see some sort of more gems in there and you can reminisce about tweets that we've uh, featured in other weeks. Um, as I said uh, at the top of the show, our next show will be next Sunday, or this Sunday coming, I should say, which is the 9th of May. And that will be with comedians Luisa Omelan and Matt Green. So we're very much looking forward to that. 
Uh, yeah, if you want very to, excited to join very us in the Zoom to see room. Louisa again. <laughs> oh, definitely. And uh, if you want to join us in the Zoom room, please do go to Eventbrite and book by donation there. You can also watch us on streams. It's not as interactive, obviously, but you can get details of that from our website, uh, which is www.letskilltwitter.com. Please follow us at LKT Zoom on Twitter. And um, obviously, uh, have a great week. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And Bye. That, <laughs> that means I have to find the non I have to find the non-streaming button. I've got so relaxed the non I've lost the non-streaming button. Right.